Uh, for, the, for the first part, we're going to have Lisa here, who is from Raoul Wallenberg Academy from Sweden. She's going to talk about um, very exciting projects in the Swedish schools, and hopefully we're going to get super excited about that and, and inspired. She's going to have to catch the flight, so um, you know, don't get embarrassed if she leaves in the middle of the workshop. Um, and then after Lisa, there's going to be Birute, who is from Lithuanian Center for Human Rights. She's going to present a, pro our project, which is called um, Inconvenient Films Class. So, uh, microphone to you, Lisa. Thank you. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes, you do. Uh, it's great to be here. I'm, how many teacher colleagues do I have here? I was suspecting you. Because <laughs> I've met these two, so... Uh, Good to have you here. I used to be a teacher, but now I'm working at the Ralph Wallenberg Academy, and we're supporting schools in, in their uh, values assignment, working with human rights. So to start with, um, I was thinking about this. I, I'm trying not to talk so fast just because I have short time, but my mission today is to hopefully inspire you with a project, school project we have, working with human rights. And it felt really important to take the opportunity while, while I'm here, because it's an international project. So it's actually possible to have an inter, inter what do you call it, interchange? Yes. Uh, with Swedish schools, which will be very interesting for us at least. So just to tell you shortly about the Ralph Wallenberg Academy, we we're a non-profit organization. Uh, we've been working since 2001. And uh, who knows who Ralph Wallenberg was? Good students. OK, so let me just give you that background. So uh, I think I have a picture of him here. There he is. That's a black and white picture. So Ralph Wallenberg, he was a Swedish diplomat. During the uh, World War II, he went down to Budapest in Hungary and he had one mission. They just gave him loads of money and said, please do as much as you can and try to save as many Jews as you can. So he went down and he was very successful. He managed to save tens of thousands of Jews uh, from the Holocaust. And this was actually his weapon, that's his portfolio, that's where he kept the false Swedish passports. So he produced passports that saved Jews. And this is the picture of the passports. They were actually already making passports when he came down, but he made them a lot better. And he kept, he produced around 500 a day and when it was really intense. And this is his sister. She's 96 years old. She is alive and kicking, and she's working with us. And she was the one who started the academy. Because Ralph Wallenberg, in, at the end of the war, he was captured by the Russians. So he saved so many people, but no one actually could save him. But so uh, Nina, <laughs> this sweet lady, she, she spent her whole life uh, trying to find out what happened to him. And then 2001, she said, I have to do something else. So she started Ralph Wallenberg Academy to inspire young people to act in his spirit for equal rights and humanity with civil courage. So that is what we do. And we have different projects. Uh, we have school projects of human rights and we have teacher trainings of how can we cultivate this young person to be that really brave uh, person, to risk something, to have the civil courage to stand up and even to prioritize those questions. But I want to start up engaging you a little bit and to see if you are courageous, do you feel brave? Yes, yes, that's one. <laughs> that's great. So just to have a small checking, because it's great, we're a small audience. So I just want to, we, we're saying we're trying to cultivate courage. And we all have courage. Sometimes you're really brave and sometimes you're kind of, I wish I was. <laughs> so I want you 
to check in two and two and think about one moment in your life when you really felt brave. Last time you really felt brave. Maybe you did something small, you know, you had this dinner conversation, this really nice family dinner, and someone is saying something really racist or, you know, and you kind of raised your voice, excuse me, because that's really uncomfortable, especially with people you love. So think about a moment, it, has, it could be anything, when you felt brave, you did something that was often quite uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But it was about to so I had a, uh, can I talk without Of course you can. Do you hear her? I, I yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So I, I would... But no, speak for us. Speak for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had a, a chat with my daughter. And as my daughter used to live in many different countries and visited lots of different countries, for example, such as Costa Rica, now she is currently working in the USA, or she went to Japan, and so very widely, widely, widely countries around the world. So one day she asked me, what would I feel if she had a boyfriend who would be, let's say, uh, not, not only my nationality, but not my race. And you, you, you know, I feel confused. I always felt myself being Thank you for sharing. That's a lovely story. Mm. Too bad it didn't get, but we got it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So I think you all have stories like that. Just two and two. Tell each other a story, like maybe like yours, the, that turning point, or one time when you were actually brave. I will give you two minutes just to share stories in between. Okay? Two and two or three. Just get together. You could get together with us. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not giving you much time for all those interesting stories. Am I allowed to interrupt? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Sorry for giving you, cutting you in those interesting discussions, but uh, we're going on. Uh, I just want to share some best practice how we work in at the with the schools and trying to our projects. And uh, we have a school project with human rights and then we have the self-leadership uh, teacher training. Sorry about that P. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what we have, uh, the, the experience we have in Sweden is that, as I 
said earlier in the panel discussion, in the Swedish curriculum, it's very, it's very detailed about how to work with human rights. And we have all the perspective is really written down that it is um, compulsory and you have to work with it in all the different subjects all the time, both using it practically as a way of working democratically, but also as a knowledge assignment. So it's very, very well um, befest, it's very uh, stated, yes. But then the question is, how do we make them really involved? That's, that, that's the struggle we have. How do we create engagement in these questions? It's not only learning about they were written 1948 and they are 30, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't get to your, you don't feel it. So you don't do much about it. So how do we actually re reach the heart, kind of? So we started this project that we call the CUBE program, which is an artistic uh, program, actually. Um, and it's a very funny, special project. It's, it's steel cubes. It's 500 kilos of steel that we send around to schools all over Sweden. So there are 30 uh, human rights, right? So we have 30 cubes, each of 500 kilos. So each cube has one human right. So you apply as a school to get this human right, and we come with a big lorry, and we put the cube in front of your school like BAM! Meaning that human rights is nothing you just BAM! make disappear. It's really there to stay. It's heavy, you can't avoid it, you can't walk through it, you kind of have to walk around it. It's there and it's reminding you every day. So the mission is very easy. We just kind of handle out these cubes and then we tell them, this is a free uh, creative project. Your mission is learn about this human right. That's number one, that's quite superficial. Level number two is understand it, relate to it. How does it concern you? Look around at your, in your classroom, at your school, in your society, and then maybe around you. But don't point fingers, look down where you're standing. And the next step is your personal responsibility. So what can you actually do? So this is how they work, uh, and the, uh, the end of the mission is, so now be creative, and show us all the discussions, the complexity of the human rights. Sometimes they, they, they don't go together, they, they, they kind of uh, crash, no, uh, right? So all those, the complexity of it, you have to illustrate it, be creative. So actually these cubes, each cube is a little gallery. So it's a gallery so the students get the, creati the, the opportunity to create uh, themselves, and that turns out to be really fantastic uh, things. It's a piece of art, it's poems, it's podcasts, it's lots of films, it's dances. I've seen dances outside the cube, I've seen dances on the cube, actually. Uh, it's, a, it's a meeting point, so they have debates around the cube. Um, and then at the end of the semester, we come and we collect all the cubes and we bring them back to Stockholm and we have a big exhibition at the Ralph Wallenberg's Day in August. And this year we had 3,000 students coming uh, to celebrate and show all their, um, their, get their little gallery and see the other's gallery. And it's really, really powerful to see that it's not only in our little school, in my little town, this is all over Sweden, and it's actually international. So we're having even the international schools, some of them are coming, and some of them are joining in digitally. So it's a great feeling of empowerment, that, uh, of possibilities. So I just want to show you some examples of what they've been doing, because it's really uh, fascinating. Uh, this is all the different level going from 
what are they to, how do they concern me? And then to inspire more people. It's quite common in, at the end of the semester, they put out the cube at the main square, so they actually show during summer break, they show, they show it, they put it outside the grocery store, so they could kind of invite all the people in the society and say, so this is how we work in school, we've been discussing. So that's a way to, all the good things we do in school, we try to inspire people outside school. Um, so this is the cube, this is the right to freedom, it arrives in February. Uh, so it arrived in the, the same day as St. Valentine's Day. So the student, they said, okay, of course we're going to love bomb the cube when it arrives. So they started out by uh, writing love poems in all the different languages at this school. So they have 17 languages represented in this school. So that was the, 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 the loving welcome for the cube. And then they kept on working with the same right, the right to freedom. And they were thinking, okay, what's the most... Uh, how free can you be? Free as a bird. So they wanted to create birds and put it here. And then the discussion went on. So what if you don't have the minimum of um, material standard? How free are you actually? And they said, if you don't have a pair of shoes, could we talk about freedom? So these students, they made a big collection of shoes. So they collected 500 pairs of shoes and they sent them down to a refugee camp in, in, uh, in Sahara. Uh, but before sending them, they had a big festival. So they had a big manifestation uh, of all the shoes and this is work in progress, and they had a big festival, so they designed t-shirts on the theme of uh, freedom, and then they had the big dream of all the teachers, because they could go on the catwalk showing the t-shirts. <laughs> and they, were, they, were, they, they didn't know if the teachers wanted to join in, but they all wanted to join. <laughs> uh, so they sold the t-shirts as well. Uh, another school, they used it for a point of a debate, so they invited the politicians to, to discuss the right to education. Uh, this school was working with the right to nationality, and uh, they had a big inauguration in the main square in that city. And uh, the main speaker was Oman, uh, he's one of the new Swedes, and he was sharing the experiences from arriving to Sweden as a Kurd and they don't have a nationality and actually inspiring the Swedish students to really understand the meaning of this right because we've been quite spoiled in Sweden we've had 200 years without war and it's for our students maybe difficult to understand how important they are and how easily we can lose them. So we have to defend them every day. So This is just to show you some of the creati cre creativity. Uh, they were working with the right to a fair trial. And we have a Swede uh, called David Isak and he's a journalist who's been captured in Eritrea. So they were working around the destiny of his, this, his case. And uh, this is actually where, very well done. They take all the articles written about them, him and made his face from that. And here you can see the electrical chair made out of blood money. So you can see it's strong feelings invested in this piece of art. There's another right, the right to culture. So these students were during the big national um, event. They, were walk they had collected books and they were saying a piece of culture for you, that's your right and your piece. So they were walking around doing their activism and they uh, had an installation with their teacher in, in the cube. 
the right to a basic living standard. This is also a very powerful installation. They copied one of many homeless people in Stockholm. And uh, this sign says, would you like to sleep here? And it's a copy of the life for too many people in Sweden. And this is a pro uh, project which is very cross-curriculum, so it involves all different kind of subjects. In mathematics, you can look at the statistics. How does it look internationally? Uh, and this is to show uh, we have a program for restaurant. Uh, it's a special program, a practical program. So they wanted to be involved as well. So they had, uh, when they had a big celebration day, they were serving the, the starter, the main course, and the humanitarian course. And the humanitarian course, you had to eat with someone you didn't know yet to make a new friend, start new meetings. So just to show you, there's so many creative uh, ways of working with the cube. And the, the experience is, the more you let go to the students, the better it becomes. So the, the most courageous teachers that have just, okay, so we have a committee of students, be free. It, it, it takes courage because you always kind of want to be in position, but then um, it's really something. So as I said, this is a project that organically have just been searching its way abroad. So we have five cubes in Serbia, we have one in Hungary, and one in France, Spain, in New York. So you see my question mark. <laughs> we would love to have one in Lithuania. Uh, because I think it's very powerful when young people could discuss this and learn from each other, because they have different challenges. Uh, so please, if you would be interested in that, the, the contact would be, could I out you now, Hannah? Yes. Is that fine? <laughs> so talk to the Swedish embassy. Uh, and this is represented by Hannah here. So that would be my pleasure if we could have one here. <laughs> uh, so just before I'm, I'm having you a little mini workshop with you, with the teacher trainings we have, but before getting into that one, uh, just to see if you have some questions about the project. Cubes, yeah. yeah. So you put them, I don't know, in certain city, and uh, children from that particular school doing something. After that exhibition in Stockholm, and after you you remove everything and put cubes in other cities. How it works? Yeah. Oh. So uh, actually, now we have forty. Uh, because it's more and more schools being involved and once they've been working with it one year they want to keep it so we thought okay we keep producing new cubes uh, but from the beginning they were just you had to apply and say why do you want to work with this cube and then we kind of had the different and what about rights who decide what what right to to discuss and work on on which right Good question. So far we've had, we just handled them out, but they could ask if they really want to work with a special right, we would deliver that one and we would reserve it. Uh, concerning the international cubes, they're all number 30, which is the right to human rights. So then you can very freely work with human rights in general, or if you just want to pick a specific right. Hmm? Are you talking about the, how we work in Sweden or how we work internationally? Ah, in Sweden we collect them twice a year, the, the, the teachers involved, just to share experiences and share uh, best practice. And now we're starting to involve uh, students as well. 
because there are more and more schools are having these uh, youth committees that are running the project, so they have lots of experience to share. So twice a year we, so we're starting up a, a network of teachers how to... Hmm. Uh, it, 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 it is actually represented from all subjects, but it, it's n quite common to have the uh, some, some social sciences, history teacher, the, the, the Swedish language teacher, because there's so many of writing poems, writing stories, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then uh, all the creative uh, subjects, like arts and music and dance, they always see the opportunity of uh, bringing the, the value, the, the subjects together. It's high school, yeah. But we've actually let in some, sometimes they have uh, all, all ages, so then we're not that picky, but if we're... <laughs> Yes, so all the material, we, we have some teacher material for each subject, that's more for the high school students. Mm. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Same as you? Yeah? Mm. Mm. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you for your... Um, all your good questions here. So, and, and then I'm interested of you two there. <laughs> Are you students? Yes? I kind of guessed. <laughs> so I'm just curious to hear your, uh, what's your impression of a, a project like this? Yeah, well, but it's creative. And it's fun. Uh, I think uh, this is a thing that maybe Lithuania need, because uh, we don't have like uh, separate uh, subjects where we learn about human rights. We have like history where we supposed to learn that, but not every time. <laughs> so I think. Uh, Lithuania needs the cube. <laughs> you want to say something? Okay, so uh, I think the, the most important thing uh, is that uh, our younger generation uh, usually uh, are do, do know about the rights uh, most of the time. I mean, uh, especially in high school. But uh, the, the biggest problem, I think, is between older generation uh, who uh, and I, I don't talk about cities. I, I'm talking more about uh, regions like uh, uh, small towns and everything like that. So I think those regions need more of this awareness and to all, about all the human rights and tolerance uh, for for different people. I think. I, again, as I said, I'm talking more about uh, more remote areas, more... Uh, uh, I don't want to specify, but uh, if you... If for, uh, let, let's, let's take uh, some small town uh, where there are not so many people, and usually uh, they, they don't really uh, understand or uh, connect with problems uh, like again uh, today is the day of human rights right and it's uh, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, LGBT people we're talking about races and in in small towns or villages I don't know uh, they don't see that often they they see around themselves uh, uh, they see same people every day and uh, it's it's not a problem for them but when they go to a different place where there are many people, they are very diverse, and then 
problems can happen. I'm not saying it's gonna happen, it, it may happen or it may not, but I think that's why we need more awareness in, in those smaller parts of, of the country. That's all. I think that's very interesting because then you could actually, the, the young people, they're so normally updated. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's too. Don't look, don't look. Uh, did I do this? Uh, they're so uh, mostly quite updated with the digital world and everything, so this could be a, a very good way of inspiring the rest of the society, inviting them into the cube. So I think it's a, it's a very, and thank you for sharing, both of you. <laughs> so let's go on. Uh, I just want to, I would just want you to experience a, a mini workshop, okay? Just to see how we work with um, self-leadership. And we're trying to see, because in at least, I don't know about you, teachers, uh, our biggest challenge as teachers is to get the people, the students, engaged and motivated. Maybe that's only a Swedish problem, I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. So we've been looking on, on the science, what, what does research say about inner motivation and well-being, because we have a big problem of um, mental illness as well. Young people being very stressed out, worried about the future. So we took all that uh, research there is and trying to put it into the school. And uh, what research, I don't have time for this, it's interesting, I'll be back. <laughs> but what research says uh, about inner motivation and well-being is that we all share three basic needs, no matter what culture, what, what country, what age, it's all the same human needs. And that is the need to have autonomy, meaning I want to decide myself. So it doesn't work with someone telling you what to do. I need some kind of autonomy, doing what is important to me. The other one is that we all share a need of feeling development, that we are actually growing. Do any one of you feel that you want to grow at work? Or do, don't you? You couldn't care less. Yes? How, how is it with you? If you like growing? Yes, man, man, so many of you. <laughs> so that's quite important. And then the third one is that we all have a need for connection. And that is also um, uh, strongly connected to a sense of meaning that you want to be in a in, uh, in connection and actually contribute to that. So that is the, the research we are uh, relying on in our teacher training. So what I want to do this little workshop is a short experience of autonomy. So um, it's not that easy if someone would ask you, so what is important for, to you? What is like the core value? You don't really just go, ba, 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 ba. You agree? So that's something you really have to explore about yourself. And if you ask young people in Sweden, they want to say, I want to be famous and I want to be rich. <laughs> but then if you start scratching a little bit, there's something else behind that being famous and rich. There are other values. So now we're in the workshop. I want you to take one paper each. It's in English, I hope it will be fine. I can take it out so it's... I hope you have a pen. So try to sit in pairs, two and two. Get together, two and two. And for some people, this could actually be challenging in your comfort zone. So just try to stretch it this afternoon as much as you can. Uh, so the first thing you do is I'm going to give you two minutes 
to underline all the words that you find is really important to you. You kind of, okay, this is me, this is so important to me. So just um, as many as you want, underline all the words you find important. And I'm going to give you two minutes, as I said. Did you all understand the mission? Otherwise, it's here. Okay, so that was the easy part of this exercise. <laughs> now comes the difficult parts. Now you have to pick six to nine of the most important ones and circle them. So put the circle around the most important ones. So now you have to prioritize maximum seven to nine words of the most important. Okay, so you could spend more time on this exercise another time, but now we're just having a little, a little bit of a, 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 a sneak peek. So, 
this is actually only words for most of us, uh, right? It's just words you find uh, tempting. But now the thing is to, how, how come you've all picked those words? It, it's because of your experiences in your life. So now we should connect these words with experiences and situations from your life. Uh, so we're going to be in pairs and one person is a storyteller and is going to tell the other person about one, the most important word and say, tell the other person, why is this word so important? And the thing is not just to say, in general, you know, peace, peace, I love peace. Peace is so important. No, it has to be personal. It has to be, to me, um, I could say, balance is very important because when I, uh, when I was a teacher, I had a complete breakdown because I was working too much. So from that time, it's very important to me. You see what I mean? So it has to be a very specific situation. And the thing is that to each word, you will have hundreds of stories and experiences. Stories from when you like uh, was sitting on the bus or stories from your childhood or, you know, there will be so many stories. So, one is the storyteller, telling to the other one, to the listener, and this is quite interesting. The listener has to listen with 100% presence. That means asking no questions, giving no comments. That's a good training. Just being zip, silent, and listening to the other person. Do you understand the exercise? Okay, so you talk about one word or two words, as many situations you have, and I'm going to tell you when time is out, and I'm going to give you as much as one minute each. So when my one minute is out, I'll tell you, and you switch pairs, so the listener will be the storyteller. So the one with the longest hair will start, Okay, so if you are, <laughs> try to be in pairs, or otherwise you can be three, that's fine. So the longest hair, here you go, one minute to go. So you finish your sentence and you switch roles.
So finish that sentence. I love the mumbling, but I'm sorry, I have to stop you. <laughs> this was a super short experience of the way we try to integrate the personal values into your self-leadership. So how can you actually start exploring what is important to you? So you start making your decisions from that and you take care of your autonomy. So I want to... Um, ask you to, the, the value you picked, maybe have focus on that value for this week and try to see, so how can you bring in that value in your life this week? Is it something you have to do? Is it something you have to say? Is it something you have to stop with? I don't know. But maybe to, for your own well-being, focus on one of these words and bring it into your life. And this is also a way, I don't know what your experience was after such a zoom, super quick thing, but normally it's also a way of understanding each other, what is important to you and what is important to me, and really starting up this empathy and tolerance towards each other. Um, so, this will be my last slide. Wow, wow, wow. Woo! That's my thank you. I want to thank you for, <laughs> for, uh, for listening and uh, being so engaged. Thank you very much. <laughs>
platformoje taip pat pasiūlyma mokytojams naudoti ir tam tikrus interaktyvius būdus. Ar netgi patariama, pavyzdžiui, gal jūs norėtumėt bent šiam užsėmimui persi organizuoti savo klasę, pavyzdžiui, ir nesustatyti stalų, nes kai kuriuose mokyklose vis dar stovi stalai, Na, kaip vienas už kito, ar ne, moksliai veikia tur, jau sėdi visi ratu ir taip toliau. Tai čia juokiasi matau, nes turbūt jau čia vas jūs taip nebėra, ar ne, aš taip įtariu. Yra? Ai, vis dar stovi stalai, ar ne, taip. Labai nemėgsta, ar ne. Tai... Aišku, tai yra tam tikri patarimai mokytojams, kurie neprivalo, bet iš esmės aš galvoju, kad dokumentinis kinas yra tam tikras išskirtinis žanras ir kodėl nepatogus kinas, kaip vienas draugas, mano kuris šiandien kalbėjo, Dominikas, pasakė, sako, aš ateinui nepatogu kiną ir sako, man žiūri, nepatogu, bet labiausiai tai dėl to, kad ekrane aš matau save. Ir ekrane matau save arba matau kažkokius dalykus, kurie man itin rūpi gyvenime, bet aš galbūt ne visą laiką randu laiko apie juos pagalvoti, ne o visą laiką randu laiko pagalvoti apie žmogų, kuris yra šalia manęs. Tai tai yra vienas iš būdų, kaip galima ieškoti kažkokių tų būdų. Šiuo metu NK klasės bendruomenė sudaro 1200 ar mokytojų, ar kitų edukatorių, kurie dirba su neformaliu ūkdymu iš įvairių Lietuvos miestų ir man atrodo, kad po truputį, kiek aš matau, auga tą bendruomenį ir didėja. Ir iš tikrųjų, aš čia kalbu pristatinėdama tą nepatogaus kino klasę, bet iš esmės jie kuria taip pat tokie pasišventę mokytojai, sakyčiau, kurie dirba atskirose mokyklose ir kurie bando vežti kažkokį tą žmogaus teisį ūkdymą, atnešti į savo mokyklas, tai bandydami kvėpti kolegas. O kas yra to pačiu svarbu, kad šitie filmai mes jos taip pat pristatinėjome ir nepatogaus kino metu, kiekvienais metais nepatogaus kinas, kas nežino, festivalis žmogaus teisių dokumentinių filmų vyksta 12 miestų. Tai jo metu keturiuose miestuose taip pat vyksta užsėmimai moksleiviams, kai moksleivis susirenka į kino sales ir diskutuoja atskiromis temomis. Ir iš tikrųjų tik tais galbūt keletas istorijų, pavyzdžiui, šiemet Kaune, bežiūrint vieną iš filmų, Na, mes žinome, kaip ir minėjo čia moksleiviai, kai tik tais pradinam diskutuoti LGBT temą, tai visi, visi žmonės turi nuomonę. Nėra nei vienas žmogaus, kuris neturėtų nuomonės. Tai vyko peržiūra su moksleiviais filmo ir pradėjo kažkas diskutuoti, ai, čia dabar dar apie pydarus, pradėsime šnekėti ir taip toliau ir panašiai. Ir tada atsistojo vienas moksleivis ir sako, Žinot, tai yra tai, kas sakai, aš girdžiu beveik kiekvieną dieną savo mokykloje. Ir iš tikrųjų, kas man atrodo buvo stebuklinga tos peržiūros metu, kad truputį fokusas pasikeitė. Nebe buvo kalbama maždaug gerai ar negerai čia naudoti, bet kad susivokime, kad mes kalbame apie žmonės, kurie šalia mūsų yra. Ir rinkdamiesi žodžius, galbūt turime būti šiek tiek atsankingesni. Tai aš labai ilgai nebetesiu, nes prezentacija prieš tai užtruko kurį laiką, bet jeigu norėsite, apsilankykite nepatogaus kino klasę LT, tai laiko trūkumo nerodysiu, kaip ten naudotis, bet iš esmės galima pasirinkti filmus pagal temas, pagal klasės. Ir kas yra labai patogu, kad galima tiesiog pasižiūrėti trailerius ir ką kartais moksleiviai, pavyzdžiui, daro, pasižiūri. Ir patys sako, mes norim, kad mūsų mokytojai parodytų kažkurį tai filmą mūsų klasėje. Tai dėjo, kol kas neturime galimybės padaryti tos platformos prieinamos moksleiviams tiesiogiai, dėl to, kad esame priboti licencijų, filmų licencijų. Tačiau galimybė yra galbūt organizuotis moksleiviams tarpusavį ir kai yra vadinamas peer education arba moksleiviai ūkdo vieni kitus, tada jie kaip kažkokia užsėmimo vėdėjai irgi gali būti laikomi edukatoris, nes žinoma, kad tai yra turbūt vienas efektyviausių būdų, kai moksleiviai vieni kitus įkvėpta kažkokiais klausimais. Tai kviečiu tiesiog apsilankyti nepatogus kino klasė LT, Jie yra prieinama, trailerius gali žiūrėti visi, bet metodinės priemonės ir filmai yra prieinami tik tiems, kurie užsiregistruoja. Tai yra toks apribojimas. Tai tiek šiandieną. O dabar kviečiu galbūt pamatyti nepatogaus kino klasės vieną iš filmų, kuris atsiras 
kaip tik šios savaitės pabaigoje, tai konferencijų salėje penktame aukšte mes žiūrėsime filmą Seksas be sutikimo. Toks film, pavadinimas, aišku, visiems iš karto keliantis įvairių minčių ir po jo diskutuosimo, kągi mes turime su jaunimu kalbant apie savo seksualumą, ar mes apie jį iš viso kalbame ir kiek svarbi tai yra tema. Tai va, ačiū labai ir linkiu gražaus vakarą. Dziękuję.